afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Be afraid, baby. What it do? This is Lil Deal Block Kings Entertainment coming at you one more time with a video. This is 999 Block Kings. It's my YouTube station. The name of this video How Digital Music is Tracked to Pay Recording Artists. How Digital Music is Tracked to Pay Recording Artists. Because inquiring minds want to know. Now, this video. Is, is not so much for the tech guy, for the guru, that, you know, the technical. This is just for the uh, the independent artist who knows it works, but, but wants a better explanation on how it works. This video is for you. You can check out this video as well as my other videos on YouTube. Videos from an artist's perspective. 999 Block Kings. For the many independent artists that's out there making a living by the works that they create, this video is for you. The question does arise in the new world, how is digital music tracked? How do they know how many times it's played, how many times it's uh, seen? How do they know that besides views, um, likes, comments? Well, I have one way that they are being tracked. Lights change it right before the gas began and wait. The hustles every day, so there's no need for set a date. I put now aside from traditional radio that you know pretty much tracks how many times a song is played in a day, in an hour, in a week, in a month. How are songs tracked for independent artists as far as payment for royalties? You know, we just gonna answer a few questions. I ain't gonna really get into it too deep, but I will. Uh, leave some links in the description box so if you want more information on the topic you could gladly on your time check it out more we plan to actually take shape another purple conversation about the race the sipping grapes I've been anxious to find, find a way another day above ground is the day the bottom line music is tracked by ISRC codes ISRC codes what is a ISRC code, you ask? Good. This video is for you. That's why you're watching this video. We finna get into that. ISRC code stands for International Standard Recording Code. International Standard Recording Code. Now, you pretty much know everything we do now is tracked from all angles. People can find your location, time-sensitive, time coded, location coded, everything is tracked. So is your music. To put it blunt, you cannot buy or sell globally, internationally without your music having ISRC codes. And the thing about it, this has been going on for a while now. People just don't understand exactly what is it. Some don't care, but for the person who does care on how it works, to make yourself a better artist, we made a small video about it. This video is for you. The ISRC code is a code that's um, embedded into each track of your music. That way they can track it. Every song that you have is like putting a thumbprint embedded right into the music. And, and the first thing you would think, you'd be like, okay, that's what the barcode's for. Okay, the difference between a barcode that's scanned and the uh, ISRC code is the code's embedded in the song. The, uh, the barcode pretty much is embedded in the packaging. You can pretty much look at it like a, a thumbprint because no two will be the same. Like on the movies, them high five movies where they look into the eye and they scan your iris and that's how you enter a room or something like that or pretty much your signature because everybody's signature is different a ISRC code is a 12 number alphanumeric digit 
that's embedded right into your music. That way your music can get streamed and no matter where it's streamed at, they could uh, keep track of it. And, and that's one way that artists get paid. You can pretty much look at it like GPS on your song. It's a digital type of ID that's embedded into each song you write when you pretty much are selling it. That way it's measured on how many times it's played, how many times, you know, where it's being played at the most. It's big business. ISRC codes are recommended to be um, embedded in every song that you have. If you do like podcasts, if you do sermons, audio books, any kind of uh, spoken word, training programs, ISRC codes are or need to be embedded in all that so that they can keep track of it. If they can't keep track of it, it's invisible. It, it pretty much does not exist if it can't be tracked. Now, if you're an independent artist and you put out your own music, it really is up to you to uh, have these ISRC codes embedded into your music. Now, when you go to a manufacturer for your CDs, for your discs, um, usually that'll be an option now if you want that done or if you go to streaming service that's going to make your music available globally, internationally, their, their process, they're going to uh, add the ISRC codes in your music. It's the only way it can be tracked. Like when you sell your music digitally, when it's streamed, on online retailers. ISRC codes have always been there. It's just now you're becoming more aware of the whole process instead of just knowing that you just write songs, this what you do, and that's it. It's better to have a full scope of what's going on in the whole process to make you a better uh, uh, artist as a whole. If you plan on selling your music on iTunes, you gotta have ISRC codes. If you plan on selling your music on iTunes, ISRC codes. The good thing about having ISRC codes is as far as like billboard music charts and sound scan, they can actually see how many times songs played, where it's getting played, who's listening to it, what side of town, everything like that. So that's the good thing about it. You cannot buy or sell without these codes being in place. It is what it is. Now there are instances where ISRC codes where you'll need more than one embedded into the music like when you have remixes or different fade outs or the the music is you know, altered where it's changed like the length of the song was three minutes but you put it on a compilation for two minutes and 50 seconds. Like if, if, if any change of 10 seconds in the music, it gets another ISRC code. Or another reason is if the music got remastered or remixed and remastered, a different ISRC code will be needed. Like you know how they take like, uh, let's say for instance, an old movie like The Wizard of Oz, you know, 50, 60 years ago, and, and they remake it, remaster it, then it'll need a different ISRC code, you know, embedded into it. So when it's streamed, anytime an older recording is brought up to uh, quality standards, I pretty much think if, if, if they're adding ISRC codes to music, they're probably uh, doing it digitally with uh, movies as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your continued support. I just wanted to change it up a little bit. This is uh, 999 Block Kings. It's my YouTube station. We want to uh, look at different aspects because inquiring minds want to know because this is coming to you from an artist's perspective. And it's just things you need to know. If you like this video, comment. Make sure that you press the like button. You should have already pressed it by now. But just in case you haven't, push it as we speak. <laughs> Check out my other videos on YouTube. You can find the links in the description of this video. If you want more information on ISRC codes, we've also put some links in the description box. Go ahead and check them out. Have a good time. Have a good day.
keep your creativity flowing and by all means have a great day this is Lil Deal Black Kings Entertainment peace we can celebrate another day to shut it down. I'm supposed to feed the safe. No water down, make it count. I need to pump the brakes. I'm at the door, just trying to find my way. It's a reason for the moment, so I'm only trying to find my place. I'm on the road, just trying to fight it. I can give a chase. The bridge is in the yard, night is watching out the snakes. Walk across on a tight rope, pop of mine. Life's exciting for the half, not start to shine. It's all that matters when you're strictly about the dollar signs. It happens every week around this time. Take